Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taste of whiskey.com. Today we have the second single grain whiskey from Gervin here on my cast. The first one has been the Ep4. Ep4 uh, stands for apparatus number four. And this one is the oldest of those two. And uh, it has an age of 25 years, 42% ABV as well. And this is one of the first single grain bottlings of uh, William Grant and Sons out of the Gervin distillery, which lies in the south of the lowlands, in the southwest of the lowlands in a county called South Ayrshire. Um, grain is typically, grain whiskey is typically uh, used for blended whiskies, where you have the intense malt whiskey, and this is mixed to the specification of the blend master, and then grain whiskey is added uh, for bringing the ABV uh, or the amount of whiskey, uh, raw whiskey, in the mixture, which is then added up with water to drinking strength. Grain whiskey is lighter, a lot lighter than malt whiskey, and uh, this comes from the cereal you use for the grain whiskey. Typically, this is wheat nowadays because wheat has a higher yield in terms of alcohol liters per ton of cereal, and uh, in former times it had been maize, corn, and this one is 25 years old. So probably here we have a a uh, certain amount or if not all uh, maize in the mixture. I do not know really uh, what it is. Uh, if you see the rolling fields of the lowlands, there's a lot of wheat and there's very few maize. So it might be wheat. Um, there's a lot written here on the uh, box. Uh, very good view on the bottle, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to take the, the bottle comfortably easy out of this box. Uh, I had to tear it out and there I uh, torn a little bit on these papers here. But it's looking quite nice from the front. Well, um, here it stands. Built in 1963, the original Gervin patent still known affectionately as number one apps, was the pride of the most advanced distillery in the world at that time. Over the next five decades, number one apps was joined by four other stills. And we know from the last whiskey I tasted here that the number four and number five apps are wake, uh, low pressure or vacuum uh, continuous stills, and the others not. Um, now in 2013, we are proud to launch a range of aged single grain whiskies under the banner of that very first Gervin Patent Still. The Gervin Patent Still continuous distillation method takes the finest cereal grains to produce a very pure, fruity and clean tasting grain spirit, which is lighter in aroma and character than most malt whiskies. Well, slow, gentle maturation in American oak barrels adds richness and complexity, notes of vanilla, caramelized fruit and honey for a taste experience unlike other whiskies. Deliciously different. This is the tagline, deliciously different. Uh, and then there are those icons here, top to bottom. Uh, the Gervin Patent Still, single grain whiskey of pure character with notes of vanilla, rich caramelized fruit and a mellow honeyed finish. There is a small leaflet on the neck of the bottle and in here are those small icons again saying for what they are standing for. Uh, and in the front, when William Grant and Sons built their first distillery in 1887, this was the Glenfiddich distillery in Daftan, it was with a vision to make the best dram in the valley. Likewise, when Charles Gordon, the great-grandson of William Grant, built the Gervin Grain Distillery in 1963, it was with a vision to create superior tasting whiskey. Well, that's marketing stuff. Um, 
The Gervin complex was built in 63 and in 68 they built a Mott whiskey distillery on site, the uh, Ladyburn distillery and it produced uh, malt whiskey from 1968 up to 75 and there had been a bottling, an original uh, bottling from William Grant and Son uh, in a wooden box and today you pay 2000 something for a single bottle. They are all gone, it's a collector's item. Um, it was then in 1975 torn down and uh, the production of malt whiskey was concentrated in the two uh, Balvini and uh, Glenfiddich distilleries in Dufftown in, in the Speyside. And in 1990 or 1992, uh, they started with the production of single of malt whiskey in the Kinnenvi distillery. And I tasted the Kinnenvi whiskey already. Uh, there are just two bottles out on the market, the 17-year-old and the 23. Both are gone from the shelves already, are also collector's items. And the app number four whiskey I uh, tasted yesterday, this has the, well, the same time frame where these uh, vacuum distillation uh, apparatus were built at the Gervin distillery. They built the Kinnan V distillery uh, with different shaped uh, postels for producing their uh, Grand's finest blended whiskey. So this was, a, a, was an effort uh, to bring up the blend whiskey industry and uh, to destructure the industry so that you do no longer have to buy casks from different distilleries for your blends, but to have every blend produced in-house for your blended whiskies, every malt in-house for your blended whiskies, and therefore they have the grain whiskey coming from Gervin and the malt whiskies from the Speyside, and with this they are able to produce uh, completely their own Grand's whiskey. And production was too too slow, uh, not too slow, too too small, so they installed another malt whiskey distillery at the Gervin plant. And this happened in 2007 and Prince Charles, His Royal Highness, opened that distillery in 2007 and it's called Ailsa Bay, A-I-L-S-A Bay, which is the bay which lies below the Gervin distillery. It's a little bit 50 meters up on, the, on a small hill looking over this bay and therefore, uh, therefore the name comes. Oh, a lot of talk. Have a sip on the whiskey. <sighs> Fruity, lot fruitier than the app number four, uh, which wasn't that <coughs> what I expected from that whiskey. It wasn't my my whiskey. No, definitely not. This one is more fruity, and um, this is not from the uh, low pressure distillation, but from a typical column still. So there is, I think, for me, is more fruit in it. And there is more vanilla and caramel in it than in the other whiskey. 25 years in American oak, this leaves marks in the whiskey. Well, very, very friendly nose. Old, settled, smooth, mellow, a little fruity, vanilla, caramel. And in the back, a little, yes, caramelized fruit. Perhaps a hint of oranges. Have a sip. Comfortable in your mouth little sweet and then oaks kicks in well 25 years in American white oak barrel leaves an oakiness in the whiskey and a decent bitterness not that bitter as the app 4 was uh, but 25 years brings oakiness in the whiskey there are tannins in the whiskey and you can't hide uh, the slight bitterness but this is complex and interwoven 
into caramel, remembers a little bit on, of chocolate, some orange, and a longer, more intense aftertaste. Definitely on, on the cask side. So the, the raw whiskey has been very smooth and a little fruity, uh, not sharp, not smoky at all. Uh, and then the cask kicks in and brings most of the character in this whiskey. So this is, for me, definitely a collector's item. It's about 200, 300 euros. Uh, I got this bottle from the distributor. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, well, I don't know how long these bottles will stay in the market. Um, if people will go for this, the, de uh, the dedicated malt connoisseur, I think they will have a try on this, but this wouldn't be their perfect dram because it's too too much oak and too few distillery character. Thank you for watching whiskey.com. Stay tuned, there's more to come and feel free to add your tasting comments in our whiskey database. Thank you very much.